Welcome to La Mia Italy, a series of short videos about Italy by a Brit with Italian blood who's lived in Britain and Italy and loves them both. This video is about a building that literally took my breath away when I first went inside. The Pantheon in Rome. The oculus, the opening in the dome, the pattern on the dome with its layers of shadows. It seems to float above you and connect you to the heavens. For people more into functionalism, these features, as well as being stunning, serve a structural purpose and lighten the dome, ensuring it's still standing today, nearly 2,000 years later. But the Pantheon is not unique to Rome, as it has a much less well-known smaller brother, which is also still standing today, and we'll look at that in a moment too. Although the Pantheon gives us a very good idea of what a grand Roman building was actually like inside, we don't really know what it meant to the Romans, other than it was some sort of temple to all the Roman gods. The Pope saved the building in 609 by consecrating it as a church, but any remaining pagan elements were removed. The building we see today was built in the reign of the Emperor Hadrian. In its day, the Pantheon would have stood tall, with steps leading up to it and perhaps a 100 metre forecourt in front of it. Mussolini had plans to sweep away the medieval buildings around it, as he actually did with those around St Peter's, but thankfully this never came to pass here. The dome is made of 5,000 tonnes of Roman concrete. The materials used get lighter near the top and the oculus, as well as the decorative coffers, all serve to keep the structure light and stable. It remains the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world today. Even now we don't know how exactly the Romans made their concrete. The coffers are worth a closer look too. They're geometrically complicated shapes with the shadows adding to the effect. The oculus is nine metres across and at this point the dome is at its thinnest, not much more than a metre thick. It's the only light source and the effect of the natural light is breathtaking. When it rains the water comes in with the floor being angled so it drains away. The floor was relayed in the late 19th century and the Pantheon holds the tombs of the first king of the United Italy, Victor Emmanuel II and Umberto I, as well as the artist Raphael. Please see my video on the history of Italy for why the first king of, Victor, of Italy was Victor Emmanuel II. The Pantheon doesn't disappoint, but it does have a little known predecessor, which you can also go and see. It shows how structurally strong the design is, as well as what the Pantheon would probably have looked like if it hadn't been consecrated as a Christian church, which prevented it from being looted. I'm talking about the so-called Temple of Mercury in Baie, on the Gulf of Naples. Baie was the Roman version of Saint-Tropez, or Las Vegas, where the super-powerful and rich, such as Julius Caesar and Nero, had their villas with grand baths for those who could afford them. The area is volcanic, with Vesuvius across the bay, and the baths made full use of the thermal springs. The Temple of Mercury is in fact nothing more than a Roman bath, as in the Middle Ages people wrongly assumed that anything so grand must have been built for a divinity. It too has an oculus, with the dome being just 60 centimetres thick at this point, and is very similar in construction to the Pantheon, although around half the size. It has become flooded and now sits on the side of a hill. In fact, ancient Bay has fared badly, with much of it now under the sea or the Spanish castle or the modern port, and it's not on the main tourist trail anymore. However, the artist Turner came here in the 1820s, and according to a Bedeca travel guide from the late 19th century, the Temple of Mercury wasn't flooded, and for 50 cents you could go inside to hear the echoes, and for another 50 cents, local women would dance the tarantella for you. It's not like that now, but it's still worth coming to Bay, and I definitely think the Temple of Mercury deserves to be better known. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please look at my other videos, and please do subscribe. In the meantime, in bocca al lupo, and I'll see you soon.